I was meeting with the team, they showed me this video and apparently it was living robots made of frog cells that were reproducing and running around. It looked like they were eating some stuff up. What is that? So this is some work that we've been doing in collaboration with Josh Bongard's lab at the University of Vermont. So these are xenobots. Uh, the idea is uh, to use uh, cells extracted from various uh, tissues. In this case, this was frog skin. Uh, to use them as a robotics platform for two, basically two reasons. One, to, uh, to make useful synthetic living machines that are going to do interesting and, and helpful things, and also to learn more about where biological goals come from. So why is it that these standard cells with no genetic editing can do new things, can make new types of bodies, new behaviors, and so on? And the, uh, the amazing thing is they, they weren't eating those cells that you saw. They were kind of in a in a field of, uh, of, of loose skin cells, they weren't eating them. They were corralling them and pushing them into little piles because those piles make new xenobots. Those piles become new xenobots. So this was basically kinematic self-replication. It's kind of like von Neumann's dream of a machine that goes around, collects a bunch of parts, and out of those parts makes a copy of itself. It was actually a kind of, of replication. That's insane. That's crazy. So you can see, so when I'm looking at that video, um, the, the, the xenobots are the clusters, right? Or uh, well, are they, I'm not sure. are they micro? Can can we not even see the xenobots on there? We're just seeing the results of them pushing stuff together. So, so the big, the big uh, kind of uh, light brown piles roll, ro ro the, the big light brown um, uh, structures that are moving around. Those are the xenobots, and the that that stuff that looks like sand that they're moving around. Those are little tiny cells. And so what they'll do is, and this is a very short clip, but what they'll do is it, but both singularly and as a group, they will corral like little bulldozers. They will corral those cells into little piles. And overnight, those little piles will further self-assemble into the next generation of xenobots, which guess what? Will then do the exact same thing, repeating the cycle again. So simply putting these things into piles creates a xenobot. They're not doing anything to the to the material. Here's the interesting thing, and one one of the interesting things about this whole technology is that it really stretches our definitions that, of 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 robotics, of engineering, and so on. Traditional engineering worked with passive materials, so when you work with wood or metal or something like that, it's on you to make it do everything that you want the machine to do. So the engineer does everything; the material does very little. It's basically just structural. And then we sort of a little bit after that, we had some some computational materials that you can count on to do with you know computations and so on. This is the next. This is the next level of that. This is an agential material. These cells have agendas on their own, meaning that if if they are outside of uh, the instructive influences of other cells in the body, so if they're left to their own devices and they're pushed together into a particular density in a particular environment, they are able to form this xenobot. The, the material knows how to do that. So this is engineering using two strategies. One is subtractive, meaning that we didn't add anything to these cells. We didn't give them new genes, new nanomaterials. We didn't do any of that. What we did was subtract constraints. What are the constraints? The constraints are within their normal context in an embryo. If you ask, well, what do skin cells want to do? The typical answer is, well, obviously they want to make it this, this boring two-dimensional sort of cell layer on the outside of the organism that's going to keep out the, the, the pathogens. Well, that isn't what they normally want to do. That's what they're sort of bullied into doing by the other cells. Right? These are instructive interactions that keep cells doing this. In the absence of all of that, you see what they actually want to do. What they actually want to do is get together and make these uh, self-motile little proto-organisms. So, so, so the first principle is, is engineering by subtracting constraints. And the second principle is taking advantage of the competency of your material. Right? So all of this works. It works for us to make it and it works for the xenobots to make it because the cells will take over. Once you put them in little these, these little piles, they take over and they do what they do best. And that actually that actually has massive implications for regenerative medicine. And we can talk about that. Um, we've, we've used that kind of principle to uh, you know, regrow legs and form eyes and various other things by taking advantage of the competencies of the cells and not trying to micromanage it.